Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. And today's topic, we'll be covering statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're going to be finding some reactions. So this will be our 17th part in this particular series. And what we have going on here is that we have to find the reactions here at this pin at A, this roller at B, knowing that this alpha here is 60 degrees and we only have one applied force of a 400 newton force applied at the distance shown. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and break up this roller here. We want to get some um, breakage of this roller into an X and Y coordinate system so that we can have a BX and a BY. So since it is a roller, the reactions will always be perpendicular to the surface the roller is resting on. So right there is my reaction at B, and it has to form a 90 degree angle with that surface. And for right now, I'm assuming that it is going towards the surface since this 400 newtons will be pushing downward. The surface has to be pushing backward or back to it. So <clears throat> what this means is that I'm going to have a BY reaction that is in the upper direction and a BX reaction that is to the left. So what I need to determine is the angles between these reactions here for B, X, B, and B, Y, so that I can coordinate and get this B into the B, X, and into the B, Y direction. So we are told that this is 60 degrees. So let's go ahead and blow this up. So here's my surface, and we are told that this angle is 60 degrees. My reaction here for B needs to form a 90 degree angle with that surface. So what this means is that this angle off the horizontal for the B is 30 degrees. So if I were to draw my coordinate system at the point of contact with the reaction and the surface right here, this angle right here would also be 30 degrees, meaning that my B sub X angle is 30 degrees off <clears throat> of B, and thus this right here will be 60 degrees due to the 90 degree angle between the X and the Y. So this triangle formulating everything over here looks like this. If I erase all this and redraw it in a nice picture, it's going to look like this, where we would have our B sub Y. We would have our B sub X. And our overall reaction of B. And this angle off of B sub X to B would be 30 degrees. And this angle off of the B sub Y to B would be 60 degrees. Just using a bit of geometry there. All right, so I'm also going to throw on my assumptions for A down here. So I'm going to assume A sub Y is upward. And since I have B sub X going to the left, I'm going to assume A sub X is going to the right, or A sub X is going to the right, since B sub X and A sub X are the only X forces here. So if we started and tried to start summing forces in the X and Y direction, you can see we have too many unknowns. So let's go ahead and let's try summing moments and let's sum moments down here at point A. So if we sum moments at point A down here, taking everything has to be equal to zero for equilibrium, we would have B sub X rotating counterclockwise about A. So it'd be B sub X positive times its perpendicular distance to A, which is 300 millimeters. And then we would have B sub Y, because remember if we have B sub X and B sub Y, it's like B is not there now. We would have B sub Y, which would be rotating counterclockwise, so it's also positive B sub Y, times its perpendicular distance, which is 500 millimeters, and then subtracting off the 400 newtons, which would be rotating clockwise, and its perpendicular distance, which is 250 millimeters to point A. So can't really solve for anything there. So might as well just write out the Y and X equations and see if we can solve for anything there. And you're gonna find out that no, we cannot solve with anything the way we have our equations written. We have to do an extra little step here. So if we sum forces in the Y direction, we will just have A sub Y plus B sub Y minusing off the 400 Newtons equal to zero. And if we wrote out the X equation, we would just have simplistically A sub X minus B sub X equal to zero. So as you can see, we have too many unknowns going on here. Too much, um, too many unknowns for our three equations. So whenever this happens, and this typically happens whenever you have a roller at an angle or on an inclined plane, what you're going to do is that you're going to put B sub X and B sub Y in terms of B. 
utilizing the um, angles that are shown here. So b sub x is simply just b times the cosine of 30 degrees, and b sub y is going to be b times the cosine of 60 degrees. So what we can do now is that we can take this portion right here, b cosine of 30, b cosine of 60, and plug it into our moment equation for b sub x and b sub y, and that way we only have one unknown in our moment equation, and we can solve for that. So rewriting the moment equation here, substituting in b sub x and b sub y for b cosine 30, b cosine 60, we end up with b cosine of 30 for b sub x multiplied by 300 millimeters plus b sub y, which is b cosine of 60 times 500 millimeters. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take the 400 times the 250 and take it to the other side of the equation, which is 100 thousand. Alrighty, so then if we take b out of both of these, we would end up with b, and then it would be 300 cosines of 30, which gives me 259.81, and then cosine of 60 times 500 gives me 250, and that would be equal to my 100,000. So b would just be 100,000 divided by 509 0.81, which is the total of the 259.81 plus 250. And my total B reaction would be 196.15 Newtons in that upward left direction. Since it came out to be positive, that means I had the assumed correction or the assumed direction correct. So that's my B. So what's remaining is that I have to find A sub X and A sub Y. Well, I already have b sub x and b sub y written in terms of b, so we can go ahead and find those out. So b sub x would just be 196.15 newtons times the cosine of 30, which gives me 169.87 newtons to the left. And then b sub y would be the same thing multiplied by cosine of 60, which is 98.08 newtons in the upward direction. So now I'm just going to take these values and I'm going to plug them in down here into the X equation and into the Y equation. So when I do that, my A sub Y pops out to be 301.92 newtons. It came out to be a positive number, so that means my assumed direction of upward is correct. And then A sub X is just simply the opposite of B sub X. So then A sub X is just 169.87 Newtons and it came out positive. So my assumed correction or assumed direction is correct as it is acting to the right. And those are my three answers for my reactions. So there is a way to check your answers to make sure that you have done this correctly. And what I'm going to do, since I summed moments here at A in the beginning, I'm going to sum moments up here at B, checking my A sub X and my A sub Y reactions. So let's go ahead and let's do that check real quick. So I'm going to sum moments at B and everything has to cancel and be equal to zero. So the 400 Newtons, is 250 away from B, A sub Y is 500 millimeters away from B, and then A sub X is perpendicular 300 millimeters from B. So just keep that in mind as I'm writing out the equation. So we would have a 400 Newtons, it'll be rotating counterclockwise about B, so it's positive, times 250 millimeters. And then we're going to have plus A sub X, because it will also be rotating counterclockwise about B since it's acting to the right, and it is below B. So it'd be 169.87 Newtons times its perpendicular distance of 300 millimeters. And then subtracting off A sub Y, which is 301.92 since it's rotating clockwise, and its perpendicular distance is 500 millimeters. And this has to be equal to zero or very close to zero. And what it comes out to be is exactly one. Now, it didn't come out to be zero, but one is very close to zero considering how large our values are. Our values are 300 
170 almost, and then 400 newtons. So basically look at the ratio of one over 400 newtons. That's a very small fraction. And also if you look at it over one over 169.87 newtons, that's also a very small percentage. So if you were to round this out perfectly, then yeah, you would get to zero. But it's one since it's a little bit of rounding. That is close enough since our force values are in the hundreds. Now, if this came out to be like 25, 30, 40, something like that, that's getting a little bit larger, um, especially if it came out to be 100 something, that means something is way off. But since it's one, that's pretty close to zero considering how large our force values actually are. So in my book, that's pretty good. It just keeps in mind that the rounding is a little bit what makes it one and not zero. And those are your final answers there. And that's how you would solve this particular problem. So <clears throat> I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.